Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to the Faith Revival. So I fly a lot, I'm always on planes, and one of the things that I notice is that every time there is turbulence, uh, you've got those first time flyers or people that aren't accustomed to flying and they start panicking. And it's always interesting because you can see people kind of laid back, watching their movies, reading their magazines, working on their laptops, whatever it is, having conversations. But then as soon as the plane starts to shake, Everyone starts to make du'a basically in their own way. They all start to pray. People start freaking out, except for those that are used to being in turbulence. And as soon as the seatbelt sign goes back off and the plane stabilizes, then the movies go back on. People kind of relax again and everyone feels safe and secure once again. And subhanAllah, that reminded me of what Allah says in the Qur'an, وَإِذَا غَشِيَهُمْ مَوْجٌ كَالْذُلَلِ دَعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Even the worst disbelievers, those who have no faith in God, when they are drowning in the ocean, if they, if they find themselves in that darkness, they will call upon Allah sincerely. Allah says in Surah Al-Qiyamah, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِيَ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقِ When a person is dying and they start to scream for help, God help me, right? Anyone in that state of desperation can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The worst human being to ever walk the face of the earth, Fir'aun, called upon Allah when he was drowning. So anyone can repent and call upon Allah when Allah sends them those moments. Now here's the thing, those moments are catalysts. Think about all the times that you almost got in a car accident, or maybe you did. Think about all those close calls and sometimes those times where you could have very well died or something very bad could have happened to you but Allah saved you right and it was just a moment of a second all of those are catalysts think about that time that you came to a realization about your sins and your state before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you felt like you really needed to make a change in your life or you were listening to a khutbah or you were hearing you know some sort of lecture online and you felt like now is the time all of those are catalysts here's what Allah says about them أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزْرَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Isn't it time for those who believe to soften their hearts to the remembrance of Allah and the truth which He has revealed? And Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدِ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Don't be like the people of the book who came before you where a time passed between that catalyst, that moment that Allah sent them, a time passed, a prolonged period went by and their hearts went back to once again being hard. قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And they resorted to or they returned to their disobedience. What happens many times is that a major shake-up, a major moment comes in our lives where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to wake up. And when we don't heed those calls or when we only heed them temporarily until we once again feel like we're back in the normal flow of things, we are not capitalizing on those opportunities. Imagine if Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he went to his sister's house and he found that she was reciting the Qur'an, Imagine if Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu after reading the Qur'an and being touched by Surah Taha said, let me go home and think about this for a few days, then I'll see what I'm going to do. The shaytan would have got the best of him. But instead he went straight to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and committed himself to him. There was a time before when he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in front of the Kaaba and he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa reciting Qur'an and he was touched by it. But he didn't act right away, so instead he allowed the shaytan to capture his thoughts. And in, in his situation, you know, instead of going and believing in the Prophet ﷺ, he decided to go kill the Prophet ﷺ. The difference between the first time and the second time is the way Umar utilized the catalyst, the way he utilized the moment and immediately committed himself to the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning what? When those moments come where Allah invites you to shake up your iman, to actually, you know, reestablish that connection with him, to, to step into uh, that next realm, to kick it into the next year. When Allah invites you to that, if you don't act with immediacy, time will pass, you'll go back into your ghafla, you'll go back into your heedlessness, and your heart will once again become harder. And not only will it become harder, but it'll become more difficult for the next moment to penetrate because every single time you're missing out on those opportunities, the next opportunity has to be that much more dramatic. So think about the wake-up calls Allah sends you, 
Don't wait for the next one. Capitalize on the one that has currently been sent to you or that you've recently been uh, been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and change your life and reestablish that connection with Allah. Do not let time pass from that original moment to where your heart once again can harden and Iman finds itself outside of the heart. May Allah protect us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearts soft and not allow us to miss out on his wake-up calls and allow us to draw close to him at all times and to always have that connection with him. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. See you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.